Hi, I'm Julia, president and founder of the What You Should Read podcast, and I'm a Christy. I'm Rachel, and I'm a Stacy. I'm Kelly, and I'm a Marianne. I'm Alicia, and I'm a Claudia. Yay! She's the coolest sitter. <laughs> she is so cool! <laughs> Yes, we have Alicia on the podcast today. Thank you for joining us. We're so excited to have you. You're excited. I'm excited. This is like the best thing all day. Well, I asked you to be on because I saw you had also posted on Facebook about the new Netflix series. Um, So I was like, okay, I know I got to get Alicia on this podcast to talk about the show. Weeks and weeks ago, I when that trailer came out, I jumped on. I could not believe. I was so excited. Something great to look forward to. <laughs> and yeah. the Babysitter's Club has come to life again. Again. Because there was the movie from before, right? Um, right. I like the movie, There was the movie. There was another HBO miniseries. Mm-hmm. The miniseries. So did you read all the books growing up? What, what growing is up, your, I read. What's your history with it? Yeah, growing up, I read all of the books. For me, it was like Sweet Valley High. I would read them, but I didn't really understand them. I was a little too young, but I read them anyway. Um, and most of what they were talking about, I didn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, I still read it, and I did it. Uh, but Babysitter's Club, like, they were kind of a little bit older than me, but they were, you know, it was definitely, like, they were going through things that I could understand, where Jessica and Elizabeth were like, doing heavy petting in the back of cars. I didn't really get what that meant, you know. <laughs> I was like, why do they always bring pets? I don't get it. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a good point. Those books were probably too old for all of us. They were a little bit too old for us. They were a little, yeah. yeah. So we could like, we could comprehend them, but we didn't know what was really happening. Tiger Eyes by Judy Bloom is like that too. It's like, when I read it, I just remember feeling like, this is weird. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but they were such teenager books. But these girls, because they were in middle school, they were a little bit closer to my age. They were going through things that I, feeling things that I also had felt before. And um, and so I just grasped onto them and held on tight. I just loved them so much. Yeah, I totally agree. Me too. They were my favorite books growing up. And I read them cover to cover and like they disintegrated because I read them so much. They would fall apart, right? Yeah. Yes. Uh huh. And I was back on. Yeah. And they were, you, like you said, just so relatable. So great to see the updates that they've made in the Netflix show, too. So today we're talking about episode three, The Truth About Stacy. So I thought what we could do is just sort of go around and give our just initial reactions overall to the episode. So, Alicia, we'll start with you as the guest. Okay. Well, I, um, I love the episode. Um, I think uh, The Truth About Stacey is a, is a real standout book because as a kid, um, I remember reading it and just being like, what could it be? This big mystery. Like, what could it be? Why is she lying to her friends? You know, and feeling such a sense of, um, of learning something about yourself too, that we do lie to our friends sometimes when we're embarrassed and that if they're really our friends, that they will still be our friends no matter what we share with them. So I remember learning that lesson through Stacy, and it was fun to see her play it out. Yeah. Rachel, what about you? Uh, I agree. I like the adaptation of the book to the episode. I, I like how it came out through sort of the cyberbullying storyline and sort of implementing that more modern um, subject into the timeline and I I mean I thought it was well done I mean I have some notes on on the diabetes representation but I'll get to that but I thought it was um very cute episode yeah yeah Kelly what about you um it's not my favorite episode but I think that's because it's in between my two favorites uh episodes two and four um I read the book the books too, as, as we've discussed. And I think honestly, everything I knew about diabetes as a kid came from this series. And I also learned what decorum meant from uh, the first book. And I think all I learned from Sweet Valley High is don't do cocaine. <laughs> it kills right. that one girl. <laughs> right. Yeah. Don't do cocaine. Lots about yeah, surfing. A lot of surfing. Yeah. And heavy <laughs> petting. The thing yeah. I re- the thing I learned from Sweet Valley High was that red pepper flakes are good on pizza. Oh, <laughs> that's that I learned that. That? oh wow! <laughs> I love this. So many life lessons. Yeah, important 
life lessons just as important as the things you guys mentioned. Um, <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed this episode as well. The Truth About Stacy is, to me, one of the better earlier books. And I wonder, though, if I liked it the most when I was a kid because she went to New York in it. Mm-hmm. And I was yes. obsessed with New York City. Yes. So that might have been part of the reason why. And even though in this episode they didn't include that part of the plot, I enjoyed the messages about bullying I thought were handled really well. I also just, as in every episode, I just continue to love the performances by these young actresses. I think that they act the way 12-year-old girls would act. They just seem so realistic to me. And I also loved, and I'll talk about it more later, just the interactions in some of the scenes with the adults, with the parents in this show. I think they're, the show's doing things and interactions with the parents that the book just books didn't do that I'm really enjoying. So yeah. Okay. Well, we can dive right in. (laughs) So this episode, it opens kind of differently with a YouTube video ad from a new competing business in Stony Brook, Connecticut, the Babysitter's Agency. So we're watching this video and it's really glitzy. They've got, they're older, they can stay out late and they have boy babysitters. And that's that's their whole advertisement. Um, so the Babysitter's Club members are watching this in just horror, they're horrified. So any any first thoughts on this first scene? I, I love that it opens with my my absolute most favorite cheesy thing, like, oh, hello, I didn't see you there. <laughs> it's it's fantastic. <laughs> and uh, also, I'm pretty sure Lacey, Lu- Lacey Lewis, right? Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure she's actually in college. Like, there's, she might be a TA in college. Like, I'm pretty sure she's not really high school. Did you guys notice that she's in a previous episode? Like they hand her a flyer. Yes. And, and um, I remember when and when I was watching the episode, they hand her the flyer and she has this menacing look. And I was like, ooh, that's gonna come back. That's, <laughs> that's an important detail. Yeah. <laughs> they were just giving flyers to anybody, like, hey, lady with Starbucks and no evidence of children. Here's a flyer. You probably know some kid you'd want to pawn off on us. Competitive rates. Yeah. Well, like you said, she's looks like she's in college, so maybe they did think she was a mom. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Yeah. She I caught that too. Yeah, this show is doing a good job about the Easter eggs, like putting things in episodes mm-hmm. that you're gonna see later. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they're watching this video and they're they're horrified, but they're like, you know what? We'll be fine. Kim is having her baby, which is something that's different from the books. They never used to call the adults by their first names. Yes. It was Mrs. Newton always in the book, and now it's Kim. So that's of course, yeah. an update. Yeah. yeah. Kids, kids are snazzier now. We let them call us by our names. Right. right. Well, I don't, but other people do. <laughs> <laughs> I still like a Ms. I like a Ms. Alicia. Right. You're a teacher, so. Yeah. Yes. 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 I like a Ms. Alicia, oh, but not a Ms. Lee. Right. I wonder if they're doing the first names because now the, the, the adults are the age of the people who loved this series growing up. Like Mrs. Newton is my age. Right. Yeah. You wouldn't want to hear that if you were watching it. Right. Right. Mrs. Newton. I don't want to hear that now. (laughs) (laughs) Oh gosh. Um, It's hilarious. Yeah. So they're thinking about how can we make sure we stay competitive. So Christy has her big idea. Kid kids. Kid kids. Yeah. Oh, Christy, what's a kid kit? Um, <laughs> I'm just going to do that. <laughs> I also remember making a kid kit. I wasn't a babysitter. I mean, I was like nine or 10. I remember making a kid kit for myself. This is for me. I'm a kid. <laughs> it's like, here's a box. I'm going to decorate the outside. I'm going to put things I like to do in it. And then I, I pulled down my kid kits when I was playing at home. It's like, but, um, but I was so inspired by, um, by the idea. That's- that's adorable. You have a kid kid of your own stuff that you get to play with whenever you want. <laughs> I do. And I know I have two of the boxes in my house somewhere. Wow. Decorated boxes. Yeah. They're somewhere upstairs. Uh-huh. Yeah. I want to see that so much. Yeah. I'll try to dig them out of the closet. Yeah. Send us a picture. A picture. Oh yes. my gosh. <laughs> yes. Kid kid. I'm pretty sure I made a kid kit for my babysitting jobs at one point. Yeah. 
good idea. Yeah. So we have a scene where Stacy is feeling a little awkward because I think Christy calls her out for the fact that she's never been invited. She's never invited her friends over to her house. Christy. So yeah, I know Christy doesn't, Christy doesn't hold back. She just says what's on her mind, which I ad- admire, but it gets her in the <laughs> <Yes>. big mouth. <laughs> Too much. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Indeed. Um, but we come to find out that Stacy has a secret. Dun, dun, dun. Um, so we cut to her shopping with her mom. And this is, I don't, do we find out in this episode, in this scene that she has diabetes? Does she say it? The secret is I that. I think she does. Because yeah. um, you see her, her insulin pump. Right. right. And yeah. trying to find clothes. Yeah. Enough to cover it up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right, so we have a scene with her. She's shopping with her mom. Her mom's trying to cover it up. What did we think of this this scene? So I definitely, I felt for Stacy because she kept saying, you know, she said, I think my mom's ashamed of my diabetes because she, she was trying to cover it up. And I mean, we find out later her mom was, just wanted her to not get bullied, which, you know, because she was bullied so much, so badly before she left New York. And I, be- I definitely, you know, because Stacy felt like, well, yep, she's just ashamed of me. And that's the way it is, which I, I felt for her in that. Yeah. Absolutely. And I like how they, you know, how they frame the story. Because as an adult watching, I was like, what's wrong with this mom? Why is she ashamed? But of course, you know, that wasn't the case. But they really pushed hard on that. So I believed it, too. Right. Bad for Stacy, And um and that she was wearing these bulky outfits and she just wants to be a cute little fashionista. You know what I mean? She couldn't be herself. Yeah. And, um, and she couldn't tell her friends about her diabetes. Yeah. I was also wondering why they didn't update the diabetes. Because mm. I don't know if, <laughs> I don't know if kids actually are ashamed of diabetes. <laughs> so I, I was curious about that. Um, just because the kids I know, even middle school kids, like they're, they're um, very supportive of each other's like mental health issues, which is something that has more stigma, but they're like, oh, such and such needed a few days. They're having a mental health crisis and this, and you're like, aren't they 12? And they're like, yeah, yeah. Well, we talk about this. We share, you know, oh, so really? they're like much cooler than we are, you know, and I just don't know. Kids are like ashamed of diabetes, but maybe they were afraid to move it to something else, you know? Right. I mean, yeah, I can, I can see, you know. I can see how it would be not as realistic because diabetes is a more prevalent nowadays and B just like, you know, we understand it better. We know, you know, that it's just something that happens to some people and everyone knows, you know, the basics of what it is and and how to take care of it because it's very, it's, uh, it's common and, you know, uh, kids see it all the time. It's like when we find out later in the, episode they're like you're you're not the first person to have diabetes I, I love that response yes i was like yeah now they're showing us like the kids were like okay i mean i know thousands of people have that neck <laughs> yeah. in some ways it makes some sense because she did have an episode of unresponsiveness where she freaked out her classmates in new york and i don't know i guess because she was at a snobby prep school they just you mm-hmm. know kind of bully her about Anything she did, probably. So it just happened to be diabetes. So it was about her really being kind of different and having that traumatic event, really. Probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what yeah. I. And she wanted to fit in it with her new friends and not and not have that happen again. Sure. Yeah. Um, so they run into Kim, who's having a baby, <laughs> and Kim <laughs> makes a comment that Stacy's on high alert. Uh, she's worried they're going to start losing business to this other babysitting agency, but we, we don't get there quite yet. Um, but then Stacy goes to sh- sit for Charlotte Johansson, who's her favorite charge from the books. And I love how the relationship between Stacy and Charlotte was portrayed in the, the show. It's exactly how I pictured it in the books. Just so sweet. And this scene, we meet Dr. Johansson. Um, and we can kind of see Stacy trying to hide her diabetes in this scene, right? Which I felt so bad for. It's such a huge part of her life. You know, we have the scene where she's shopping with her mom and then the scene where she has to get some juice while she's out babysitting. I mean, it, 
when you're 12, I could see maybe that also contributed to her feelings about it. It's just kind of taking over her life. And when you're 12, you just want to be a kid. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I love Dr. Johansson. She's <laughs> great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so she's sitting for Charlotte. They run into Lacey Lewis, who's giving away balloons. Lacey Lewis is just a mean girl. Um, she's, she's the, the worst. Yeah. <laughs> quintessential mean girl yeah i thought she needed a cigarette like that's how bad she is you know what i mean she she needed, like and not a regular one like one with a holder you know what i mean she's like <laughs> classic villain so yeah. terrible so over everything yeah lacey lewis yeah, yeah. And she she thinks she's got it got the one up on the bsc so she, there's this montage um of the babysitters and just see just kind of ruining their lives. They've got their merch all over town. They've got <laughs> water bottles, like <laughs> prank calling, sending them on fake jobs. Side and note. To, to be fair though, like I'm here to babysit Carl. Come on, Marian, you know that's made up. There is no kid named Carl. I don't think there's anybody under the age of like 35 named Carl. No. Oh, God. We're going to get attacked on Twitter for that one. <laughs> yes. All the, all the young Carls are going to be like, how dare you? I, <laughs> baby Carls are going to call. Well, now it's... I, I loved the guy playing Carl. He was funny, but... <laughs> With his diaper thing? Oh, my gosh. A little inappropriate. I was like, a little gross city gross. <laughs> also, like, I'd like to see the, the show where... Lacey Lewis goes to her dad and asks to borrow some money from the trust fund so she can buy stickers and get a graphic designer, right, um, to make a logo so she can, like, <laughs> she can buy water bottles and bags uh, <laughs> for a babysitter club. And it's like, um, no, we're not funding that. You're not, I'm not buying you all this merch. You haven't made a single dollar. You've, you've had, like, three, <laughs> three right. babysitting gigs. Yeah, right. some of that was also, like, I was like, oh, made me just despise her even more. You know she set it up like a pyramid scheme, too. You know she's got her sitters paying her from their jobs. Like, there's something of she did. Of course she did. That's where she got the capital. Yeah. Someone <laughs> had to buy in. Right. It's your own kid kit for $99. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You can make the money back. You can make it back. Don't worry. And if you get other sitters to sign up, then they <laughs> pay you. I feel like everyone in Stony Brook is rich in the show. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. in the books, it was like there was a few families that lived in the rich part of town, but I feel like every episode, we're at someone's mansion. I like that. I prefer that. <laughs> <laughs> I like the fancier Stony Brook. Yeah, I like it. I like it. And, and, like, Christy's a little less rich than now she, you know, now she's super rich. Right. She was like a little less rich. I love it that it was like the single mom, the poor single mom was still rich. Right. Basically. <laughs> You're doing fine. <laughs> You're doing fine. You're good. You're fine. You're fine. Um, I love it when the little brother was like, I mean, it was the same thing about like, you know, we're going to have to have debt for college. It's like, that was how he was defining like, we're struggling. Like, we're going to have to maybe take out a loan for college. Yeah. Like, that could happen to us. Listen, kid. <laughs> Yeah. We're poor. We're yeah. poor, Christy. I love that. <laughs> Speaking of scams. No. <laughs> yes, yes. Right. Oh, boy. Well, speaking of the mom, um, in the next scene, we have a scene with Alicia Silverstone playing Christy's mom. This is, or, yeah. I don't, I don't remember what her name is in the show. I call her Alicia Silver. Yeah, Alicia <laughs> Alicia <laughs> Silverstone Thomas. Um, and there's a fun interaction there with Christy where Christy kind of, I don't know, criticized. She said, ew, what's that on your finger? She has her engagement ring from Watson. And there's a reference to The Handmaid's Tale. Yes. Uh, <laughs> see, we which I found very funny. That? I was shocked that she, I thought she was going to, you know, not understand the joke, which is still would have been just as funny, but she totally got it. It's like, what is Christy watching? That's why she's that way. She's reading Art of War, so <laughs> she's just consuming media that is way too old for her anyway. <laughs> yes, yes. I love that. Yeah. Of Watson. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Kramer told us how you beat that thing. What? The, the thing from the Art of War, because, like, 
if you go after the head, the tail will come at you. And if you go after the tail, mm -hmm. the head will come at you. And if you go in the middle, they both come at, like, both sides. How do you destroy it? Do I need to read The Art of War? I think that, I think that I was the book report. Yeah, encouraging you to, <laughs> it was like, you know, it was one of those reading rainbow book reports. <laughs> where you only get a little bit. <laughs> I have a comment about that scene, too. Yeah. That, you know, Liz, her mom comes in and it's like, oh, we have Jamie with us because Kim went into labor. And Christy's like, we're saved. The new baby is a savior sent down to earth to like, you know, protect her class. I'm like, is the baby Jesus? Like, what's happening? Mm. The second coming of the Messiah. <laughs> that, that's, that's probably a, se a season two uh, revelation there. Yes. Yes, when he starts walking on water. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they're really putting a lot on this baby to uh too much pressure too much pressure um your business cannot depend on one family um yeah and we get a hint that the the mom might want some older sitters yeah yeah with her newborn baby i know <laughs> um so then christy calls an emergency meeting she has her friends over and she's explaining art of war and then her brother sam walks in <laughs> to the best to the you know the tropey music of when a cute boy walks in and stacy is just swooning yeah. of course I do, I will say, I think the actor playing Sam, when I was that age, I would have been swooning as well. I think okay. he was cute. He was well cast. His name's Dylan Kingwell, and he's a young Canadian actor. There's a lot of Canadian actors in the show, actually. Thank that goodness. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah right? I mean, they all have health care. That's great. Right. <laughs> They're doing well. They're doing well. <laughs> Shout out to Canada. Mm -hmm. um, and then Stacy, in this scene, Stacy has to leave because her blood sugar is dropping. Any notes on that scene? Stacy is so boy crazy. <laughs> That's her personality trait. She has diabetes. She's boy crazy, and she's sophisticated. She's like fancy clothes. Very sophisticated. Yeah. As a kid, I was definitely a Stacy. I liked. I I was obsessed that she went to New York, just like you said. I thought that was so cool, and I liked how sophisticated she was. She seemed very above it all. Now as an adult, when I watch it, I'm like, she's just boy crazy. Like, she's not any of the other things. <laughs> she's barely diabetic. She's barely sophisticated. She's just boy crazy. Every, like, the pillow. Remember when she's like, the pillow is my husband. It's like, the pillow is not your husband, Stacey. Like, <laughs> she's yeah. just boy crazy. She's adorable. She's yeah. adorable. Definitely, yeah. I, I liked how they represented her her uh, experiencing the symptoms of a low blood sugar, where mm -hmm. her brain was just like scrambling. Like when your when your blood sugar is low, you can't really always put a full coherent thought together. So like she was like, "I got a dog. He's round." Like you get confused, and um, I thought that was well done. Oh, thanks for clearing that up. I thought she was just making up lies. I didn't know what that was. She was, but she was doing it poorly because she, she couldn't. Wanna, got it, because her blood sugar was up. That makes a lot more sense. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I love that. That's a great, yeah, that's good clarity. Yeah. And so she goes home, and her mom is really worried and makes an, an emergency appointment with her doctor. So we're, there's still this tension between Stacy and her mom. We, we get the sense that they're not on the same page about Stacy's diabetes. And the next scene is probably my favorite scene of the episode with the sandwich boards. So Christy has this great idea. She's full of ideas to take Claudia and Marianne and advertise the club using these sandwich boards. Um, Kelly, I don't know. I thought of you immediately when I watched this scene. Do you remember the reference they made? <laughs> oh, it's, it's, is it, she's Pennywise the clown? Yeah. <laughs> she's like bringing nightmares into the daytime or something. And I was like, oh God. And that would be my actual hell. Yeah. Like if you have me out in public, like yelling in a sandwich board, like I would, I would legit want to die. You would be in the bad place already. Yes. Yes, I would. <laughs> Yeah, Marianne has these good wine liners. You know, she's the shy one, but she, I think she's also the funny one um, of the group. Yes, yes, I like her. I like her character here. 
um, because she, because she was so shy in the books, that was like her, the totality of her personality almost was like she's shy and then she gets a boyfriend. <laughs> That's yeah. Marianne. But she has a lot of layers, you know, there's a lot of layers to her here. And I like seeing her also like come into her own more. And she is funny. She's yeah. probably the funniest one. I agree. Yeah. Um, and she also might be the most sophisticated one, right? Because she's a little older. Like her new clothes, like very cute. Yeah. Like she really went from homely to, 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 to chic very quickly. I was impressed, right? There was little transitions. I was like, maybe, you know, she's pretty chic too. So like, we'll you know, she is the one that gets a boyfriend first of the group. So I do think Marianne was more sophisticated than she was given credit for. You're right. Yeah. Logan agrees. So yeah. <laughs> He's like, that's my kind of woman. <laughs> <laughs> the woman. I see it. Yeah. Behind her books. I see it. She's so yeah. So then the next scene, they're all walking home from school. I noted that Stacy was wearing a beret in the scene because she's sophisticated, of course. The fashions are on point. Yeah. <laughs> Each of them is dressed so perfectly for them. I definitely felt like I was, I was definitely wearing a beret in middle school in the 90s. It was definitely, I thought that was cool. So Same. I, I was glad to see it. I love to see it. <laughs> Um, everyone's just in a bad mood because they're losing business to the babysitter's agency. And then they spot Jamie Newton in the pivotal scene. He's playing in the street by himself. Jamie. Terrible. So, yeah. This scene is fairly similar to the scene in the book, I think. They, they confront the sitter, Lacey Lewis. Um whose loser boyfriend is with her. Um, Garbage. <laughs> trash. <laughs> but again, we have a great Marianne moment because he does this like awful slam poetry and Marianne's like, that doesn't rhyme, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but also they're kind of threatened a little bit because Lacey's, Lacey says something along the lines of, I have the right to defend this house however I want to. And it's like, do you have a gun? Like, you didn't bring a kid kit, but you bought, like, a gun somewhere? Like, I was like is this Degrassi? What is this? <laughs> this is very violent. <laughs> didn't catch that. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. It's like she was in a girl gang. It's too much. Also, you're not, def- you're not defending anything. You're completely ignoring. You're making out on the couch. Yeah. <laughs> so Stacy tells on Lacey as she should. She tells the mom what happened and then Lacey retaliates. And this is the the big scene where she sends out that video of Stacey. Um, Rachel, is this, as the dietitian of the group, do you, do you know, is this like a, a diabetic shock that she went into? So Stacey refers to it as insulin shock, which is um, when your blood sugar gets so low that like you can start seizing um, because your brain is being deprived of 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 its energy source of glucose, oh. and um, you know, below seventy milligrams per deciliter of blood is considered low. But usually, when you become like unconscious, is like usually below forty. I mean, you're getting down, down, down there. Um, so yeah, usually you'll need if you're in that state. She would have needed an injection of what's called glucagon, which is the hormone your body makes to counteract insulin. So it would um, raise her blood sugar up real quickly. So she would need an emergency injection and then a hospital stay to monitor her. Wow. That's intense. Yeah. Very intense. Yeah. So she's like really in trouble in this when she's, when this is happening and her friends are jerks about it. They took a viral video. It turns out. Yeah. Yeah. Where were the adults? I didn't see any adults. I know. There's like no teacher helping her. There's like no, everyone's just standing <laughs> around. Pulling out their phones like, what's happening? Jerks. Terrible. Um, so she finally comes out with it. She said that I have diabetes and I didn't want to tell you guys because I thought you would also make fun of me or treat me differently. And obviously... They would never. They are true friends who would stand by her and 
that's the, you know, the, like you said, Alicia, at the beginning, kind of the moral, right, of the story. It's like, true friends accept you for who you are and don't, don't make fun of you for things you can't control and that aren't actually, a, you know, it's a big deal that she had to deal with a serious disease, but. But it doesn't, it doesn't change, like, her, yeah. you know, it doesn't make her any less of a, a person or less deserving of anything. Yeah. If we were going to stop being friends with people, we'd stop being friends with Christy. <laughs> For how mean she is to everybody, right? I love when Claudia, I think that's episode one, she was like, I'm remembering now why I stopped hanging out with you, right? But she kept hanging out with us. She's like, I still see value in you, but calm yeah. down, you know? Yeah. So it's like, we're not going to stop being friends with you for this. We're, not, right. we're, we're here forever. Right. Yeah. You don't just throw people away because they might have some bad moments or... Yeah. Right. Right. I mean, except though that Christy did legit think she was into hard drugs. <laughs> <laughs> but once it was only diabetes, oh, that's fine. My mom's friend Jen has that. I know yeah. all about that. I bet you anything, what we don't see is like Christy following her around for the next week and a half. Like, what's your sugar level? <laughs> I have some juice. I've, I've got this, Stacey. You're fine now. Christy has to project manage everything, which I... <laughs> relate to so hard okay <laughs> I, I just i do <laughs> there's nothing wrong with it it's just you know christy takes she puts the pedal to the metal yeah yeah i'm sure she has spreadsheets tracking her blue glue levels. you're right <laughs> oh, yeah. in the bushes yeah <laughs> taking her temperature when she's not looking just anything. that's how she knows how to be a good friend okay <laughs> the babysitter now now one thing if one of the babies gets my child, I want it to be Christy. Christy is on top of it. Claudia is fun to play with. <laughs> we'll get a really nice art project. Yeah, Claudia seems fun, but Christy is attentive. The kids are going to go to bed on time. They're going to eat a good snack. It's going to yeah. be nutritious and balanced. You know, she's she's on top of it. Oh, yeah, you don't want your kids eating Twizzlers for dinner? She, Christy's not allowing it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's a good point. Um, so we find out that the babysitters decide to have kind of a meeting with the parents to explain what's going on. Because the parents apparently got this video and apparently it's enough for them to say, well, I don't want her babysitting my kids. I didn't get that. I was like, that doesn't seem... That's dumb. Yeah, yeah. that was dumb. They just needed that moment for her to have the moment. But I was like, what parent is going to react this way? But it's fine. <laughs> I did. Um, right before that scene, though, it was it was the best uh, Marianne interaction, I think, possibly of the whole series. And I didn't hear it the first couple times, probably because I was still laughing about something else. But Christy's like, we're going to do the most grown up thing. And Marianne's like, vacuum? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it was like, Funny. no. <laughs> I'm sure her dad doesn't allow her to vacuum. Right. He's so strict. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure he doesn't. In, in my house, my dad didn't allow us to do laundry um, <laughs> or to iron. That was his thing. Darn. Yeah. And so, so he, you know, it's like, that was a grown up thing to do. And so I, I remember when she said that vacuum, I was like, yeah, I bet you she can't iron either. Like, <laughs> he's just like, <laughs> You might burn yourself. You can't burn yourself. You're 13. <laughs> I guess for vacuum ironing, because an iron, you, you could actually burn yourself. So I get the but vacuuming. So I mean, at 13, you'll be fine. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. But well, single dads are known for being, from. being you know, clampy. Yeah. That's a single dad trait. You're tucking their shirts in too tight. Very. <laughs> Is your dad, was your dad kind of a Richard Spear type? Alicia, was he like? Say one more time. Was your dad kind of a Richard Spear? My dad, my dad was an army. Uh, he was an uh, captain in the army, so we made our beds every morning. Uh, we never left the dish in the sink. Or, you know, oh, I um, would not survive. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and he uh, he starched our clothes every Sunday. Whatever you wanted ironed, he starched and ironed it every Sunday um, until I was um, until I went to college. <laughs> so. Wow. Yeah. Yes, my dad was very much like that, but also not as crazy as as a Mr. S Mr. Spears, but um, but definitely about you know certain things. Just like no, this is you know I do this for you, right? I do these things for you. Huh. So I think that might be a single dad thing. 
Yeah, that's not, I mean, that's nice, right? That's showing care. Yeah, it is nice. And I don't like to iron to this day. So, so it worked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd like that. I'd be like, well, I look good because my clothes are all like <laughs> starched. I feel good about it. I look don't sharp. Have to do it. Yeah, no. Yeah. So, yeah, so they're talking to the parents. Stacy's in a blazer. So it's serious. Mm. And just explains the situation and offers to resign from the club, which seems dramatic. Um, <laughs> And then Dr. Johansson, who I love, just says, you all are blowing this way out of proportion. In fact, Stacy is a very mature kid and she is handling things just fine. Yeah. And, you know, I, so my husband has type one diabetes like Stacy had since he was five. And I asked him about this. I said, these parents are concerned about a 13 year old girl with diabetes being safe to babysit their kids. And his reaction was basically a big middle finger. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, if she's, you know, on top of her stuff and knows what she's doing, like there's no reason she's not safe to babysit. Yeah. These parents needed to be educated. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. I mean, all I saw was the video. I kind of understand it, but at the same time, it's like, okay, so you have this sitter that you probably have seen take care of your kids and seen no evidence of a problem whatsoever. She had a problem in the past. So your choice is this girl who's clearly managing things fine or her friends or the older person who let a four-year-old play in the street by himself. Right. Like right. there's people are stupid. Yeah. 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 Also, we need to call Lacey Lewis as principal. She needs to be suspended for school for cyberbullying, middle school children. Yeah. Um, no, that's serious. Yeah, that's pretty serious. Yeah. Yeah. Garbagey. <laughs> yeah. Not okay. Not okay. But, you know, things wrap up kind of nicely for Stacy, and I feel like she comes to accept herself a little bit more after the end of this. She realizes she has good friends, and she decides to wear her insulin pump out in the open and she talks to her mom and they come to understand that the mom was just worried about her being bullied by other kids. Um, so it's a really sweet moment. That was very nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then we cut to the last scene where they're all walking to the Newtons. And I mean, I just noted that I love that Christy's mom is with them in this scene because I don't think in the books that she went with them when they went to go visit the new baby. And it's more realistic that she did go with them. Like that, my mom would have come with me and my friends to, to go visit like that. I mean, totally. So I just, I don't know for me, I'm like, yeah, mom would do that. Yeah. And plus you don't send kids over. Yeah. A uh, person who has a new baby's house, you don't send children over to play at that. I mean, I know they're babysitters, but they're basically children. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Don't send four kids to my house. I got a new baby. Thanks. That's not helpful. Yeah. That was lovely. Yeah. It was so nice to see how, how much they, contrasting with Lacey, how much they just really, what the Babysitter's Club has in addition to Kids Kits. So they just really love kids. Yeah. You know, they feel so strongly about providing that extra layer of care. So they really should market that too. Um, but, but it was just nice to that juxtaposition of how much they were so excited about the baby, how gentle they were with her versus yeah. Lacey, who was, you know, with a dude who could, who thought he could rap, who couldn't, um, <laughs> oh my God, face on the that was so cringy, right. but like realistic, like just horrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god so rachel and i are sisters and we grew up in maine and oh. like, there's guys like that it's <laughs> like stop just stop yeah, <laughs> yeah. so yeah I, and then this this every episode i feel like they're doing something at the end that leads right into the next episode and in this one it's uh telling Marianne Mimi, Claudia's grandmother, you should talk to her. She knows your birth story because Marianne's mom died when she was a baby. So she, you know, they're talking about when they were born and what time and everything. And she doesn't know. It's kind of sad. Very sad. Oh, I miss that. That connects over to Mimi. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, I hope, every she, asked her before the, uh, I hope she asked her that day. I know. Yeah. And every episode just like has a foot in the next episode. So <laughs> otherwise now you'll never know. Now you'll never know. 
Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much the end. Um, any like thoughts about the episode or changes they made? I, I'm like, I kind of wish they had had the scene in New York, but there's no time. These episodes are so short, but I love that part of the truth about Stacey. We get to meet her friend Lane and uh, we didn't get that in the episode. So. No. Yeah. I like I, one thing that does stick out to me was when Stacy said she would resign the different reactions of the, <laughs> the other members. Oh my gosh, Christy. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah, that's probably it. <laughs> what? Oh, I missed that. She was like, I, I mean, if if it'll help the business, maybe. <laughs> she just, she so funny. Well, the, the the business is suffering. I mean, that's probably good. I think it was Claudia. It was either Claudia or Marion that, that made an actual. They're like, no, you know, like said something. But Christy was like, okay. <laughs> you think is best Stacy. <laughs> you thought about it you made a logical choice and maybe that's what it says in the book if that's your decision Stacy, we will respect <laughs> I mean her health is the most important thing so you know <laughs> you need to take a step back Stacy. we we respect it <laughs> it's a business to run. <laughs> oh man well any final thoughts Keep uh, going. I, I have a stray thought from the scene in the dressing room with her Stacy and her mom and then Kim Newton comes by and you know Stacy's like mom you know close the curtains and then you know her mom's like apologizing to Kim and then Stacy comes out and he's like Kim is a client. I and love that. <laughs> and then she says to Kim how are you feeling like a grown up. <laughs> She's, that's her being, I get it. That's her sophisticado. I get it. She's a client. Yeah. Oh my gosh. How funny. How yeah. hilarious. She talks to it. She, she is very comfortable around adults. She's an yeah. adult kid. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I see that much more than the rest of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's very comfortable around adults. Yeah. Oh, mom, it was a client. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's hilarious. <laughs> How are you feeling? Oh, hilarious. Yeah. And yeah, that was, um, oh, so that's when she kind of intimidated, it intimated that she may not be hiring them in the future. Right. Like, what right. did she mean by that? Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And because Stacey uh, speaks adult, she immediately knew what was going on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> the rest sure. of them would have been like, okay. <laughs> okay, well, but we're babysitting you. I feel like I understand Stacy so much better now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stacy is an adult kid. I get that. Yeah. That's what that's what makes her sophisticated. I get that. Yeah. I like that. So now when you're teaching, Alicia, are you gonna categorize kids? Like, oh, you're a Christy. I, do. I think I I think I've always done that. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you know, when you teach a long time, you see the same kids re they come back, you know. It's like, oh yeah, here's here's uh Khadijah again, you know. Uh, yeah. Same kids. And yeah, they're most, you know, these archetypes hold up. They are the golden girls. These women become the golden girls, right? Mm -hmm. They become the living single women and then they become the golden girls. It's all the same kind of female archetypes. I think Marianne would be the rose. Yes. How dare you? She's the Back funniest in. one. Back I'm adorable. I will have you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. Dork Christy becomes Dorothy. Yep. Yep. Yeah, becomes Rose. Claudia. Blanche. Does she become Blanche? No, so Stacy becomes Blanche. That's what I thought Stacy would be. Yeah. Blanche. If Claudia's Blanche. That's cool. I think Claudia, I guess, becomes like a little bit honorary. Sophia. <laughs> yeah. Well, she does stand up to Christy, and I would say. That's President right. Is. That's right. She's yeah. got a little fight on her. Yeah, for yeah. sure. She becomes Sophia. Yeah. Uh, well, thanks so much for joining us, Alicia. This was so much fun. Hi. Thank you guys for letting me come chat with y'all. This was super fun. You have anything that you want to plug or tell people about? Sure. When is this coming out? Maybe later this week, I think. Oh, later this week. Great. Then I'll, I'll plug, I'm speaking of girl power. I'll plug Girl Power 2020, which is a free summer 
virtual summer camp for girls between um, uh, kindergarten and 12th grade. Um, we'll have one week left of camp and there are presenters from all over the world presenting workshops about dance, creative writing, um, empowerment, self-improvement, fashion, beauty, things that the Babysitter's Club would love. Yes. And, uh, so yeah, sign up, sign up. You can choose uh, what you want to participate in. You can come for one hour or you can come for the whole thing. So check it out. That's fantastic. And it's open to... Any, any, yep, we have girls from all across the country, Louisiana, oh, Georgia, Pennsylvania, Maryland, um, Hawaii, tuning in for classes. So yeah, it's open to any girl. That's so cool. Yeah, we'll link to it. And if, um, we'll link to it on our social media pages. Awesome. Too. That's yeah. awesome. Thank you. Cool. Right. Thanks so much. And that's our show. Thanks again for Alicia for joining us uh, for today's discussion about the truth about Stacy. Be sure to follow us on our social medias, WYSR underscore podcast on Instagram and on Twitter. You can email us at what you should read podcast at gmail.com. And you can find us on Goodreads at what you should read podcast. And now you know what you should watch. You're welcome. 